In a world where 2.5 quintillion bytes of data is produced every day, a professional who can organize this humongous data to provide business solution is indeed a hero. Now this hero is none other than the data scientist. The mix of personality traits, experience and analytical skills required for the data scientist role is considered difficult to find and thus the demand for qualified data scientists has exceeded supply in recent years. Now data scientist is a 430 billion dollar industry and it is considered one of the sexiest job titles of the 21st century. Now data scientists topped the list of 50 best jobs in America by Glassdoor in 2016 and 2017 based on metrics such as job satisfaction, number of job openings and the median base salary. And I'm sure it will be on the top for 2018 as well. So guys, this is Kisle from Adreka and today we'll be discussing about data science. Now let's have a quick look at the agenda of today's training. So I'll start off by talking about the various paths one takes to become a data scientist. Next, I'll discuss briefly the data science training offered here at Edureka. And moving forward, we'll learn about data science, its peripherals, and the various use cases. We'll have a look at few of the projects offered here at Edureka. And finally, I'll finish off this video by showing you a few demos on the data science. Now, with experts predicting that 40 zettabytes of data will be in existence by 2020, data science career opportunity will shoot through the roof. There's no doubt in that. Now, there are various ways of becoming a data scientist. One could be coming from a mathematical background, some could come from economics, some could come from computer science as well as information technology. And there are various programming languages one can choose to start this path, like Python, R, Hadoop, Spark, and many more. Now all of this might seem very confusing and hard to work with. So let me do the analysis for you and make things easier. So according to Google, the top languages as you can see here from the graph are Python and R. While Hadoop and Spark are relatively low in numbers, they are used a lot to solve many big data problems. Now there is a particular way of study required to learn and master those techniques to become a successful data scientist. Now Adoreka, as we speak, provides a very detailed and comprehensive training on data science. It's available in both R and Python format, whichever you find yourself comfortable while coding and creating models to train and test your data. So the training is divided into 10 modules. Now upon completion of each of the module, you'll also gain expertise in the areas of technology and will also gain knowledge of the topics along with some real time implementation of these topics and many practicals to work with. Now, data science training encloses a conceptual understanding of statistics, time series, text mining, and an introduction to deep learning as well. Throughout this data science course, you will implement real life use cases on media, healthcare, social media, aviation, and HR. So let's have a look at the training structure here offered in the data science program. So, module one is introduction to data science. In this module, you will get a brief introduction to data science and will see how data science helps to analyze large and unstructured data. With different tools. We'll be starting with the basics of data science, what it involves, the life cycle, introduction to R, Python, Hadoop, and Spark. Now, coming to module two, which is statistical inference, in this module, you will learn about the different statistical techniques and the terminologies used in data analysis, like measures of center, measure of spread, probability, normal distribution, binary distribution, and much more. Now, coming to module three, which is data extraction, wrangling, and exploration. In this module, we'll discuss the different sources available to extract data, arrange the data in structure format, analyze the data, and represent the data in graphical format. Some of the topics include data analysis pipeline, data extraction, the types of data which are raw and processed data. Now coming to the fourth module, which is introduction to machine learning. You will get an introduction to machine learning as a part of this module. You will discuss the various categories of machine learning and implement supervised learning algorithms. In this module, we'll learn about the various machine learning use cases and the machine learning process flow. Coming to module five, which is classification techniques. In this module, you should learn the supervised learning techniques and the implementation of various techniques such as decision tree, random forest, classifier, and much more. We have algorithm for decision tree. We have a perfect decision tree confusion matrix. We have random forest and naive bias. Now coming to the sixth module, which is unsupervised learning. Here we'll learn about unsupervised learning and the various types of clustering that can be used to analyze the data. Some of which are the k-means clustering, the c-means clustering, canopy clustering, and hierarchical clustering. Now coming to module seven, which is the recommendation engines. In this module, you should learn about association rules and the different types of recommender engines. 
which are the user based recommendation and the item based recommendation now, module 8 is text mining we'll discuss unsupervised machine learning here and the implementation of different algorithms for example the tf idf and the cosine similarity now coming to module 9 which is the time series in this model you should learn about the time series data different components of time series data we'll learn about time series modeling and exponential smoothing models and few models such as arima and time series forecasting now coming on to our final module which is the deep learning module you will get an introduction to the concepts of reinforcement learning and deep learning in this module these concepts are explained with the help of use cases and projects you will get to discuss artificial neural network and few artificial neural network terminologies now to know more about the training you can visit edureka's website just go to the website and search for data science certification training now on this page here you can find the details of the training like the topics covered in this training the various projects and also you can find the batch timings so when you enroll for this training you will have access to the lms which is known as the learning management system now here you will find all the training related content like the presentations the case studies the projects the data sets and the class recordings in case you missed any class and here you also have a personal library section where you can upload any document or any data set you find relevant for your training for your own purposes now that we have seen the whole curriculum of data science training here at edureka let's go ahead and understand exactly what data science is and what are its features now data science also known as data driven science is an interdisciplinary field about scientific methods processes and systems to extract knowledge or insights from various data forms either structured or unstructured it is the study of where information comes from what it represents and how it can be turned into a valuable resource in the creation of business and it strategies data science employs many techniques and theories from fields like mathematics statistics information science and computer science now data science can be applied to small data sets also yet most people think that data science is when you are dealing with big data or just large amount of data now let's have a look at some of the peripherals of data science we have to know about statistics there are some programming languages like r python and sas we have some softwares you also need to know about machine learning and finally we need to know about big data as well now analyzing data has a long history it's not something new there have been many terms that have been used to describe such endeavors like statistics artificial intelligence business intelligence and data analytics now traditionally the process of data analysis used to start with the collection of data and creating structured repository in the data warehouse and using the business intelligence tools to find out the predetermined outputs this used to hurt the data analysis and businesses because the data was isolated the storage was very expensive and there was slow processing which in turn led to short and irrelevant insights and also many human resources were involved now the major part of their role was to prepare and clean the data as you can see here it took a whooping 65 percent of the time in data preparation and cleaning while only a small amount of time was devoted to analysis strategizing modeling and iteration and making decision on top of that every app and website started to store different types of data in different formats here we are talking about the outburst of the term big data now this big data was unstructured coming at real time in various formats and the traditional bi tools just weren't designed to handle all of these and therefore they failed due to the emergence of big data then began the era of data science for solving the challenges companies like ibm microsoft and oracle started to build their own frameworks this gave a new way for viewing insights and business solution automation of several tasks related to analysis such as pattern recognition and prediction are now possible now with the introduction of data science things got a little easier and different now now the data preparation and cleaning only took 10 percent of the time and lots of time could be devoted to modeling and iteration some decision making and also a good percentage of time was spent on analysis and insights which is very important now there are many real life use cases where data science plays an important role let's have a look at few of those now starting off with recommender engines today many companies use big data to make super relevant recommendations and growth revenue among a variety of recommendation algorithms data scientists need to choose the best one according to a business limitation and requirement collaborative filtering is one of the most commonly used recommendation algorithm when we want to recommend something to a user 
the most logical thing to do is to find people with similar interests, analyze their behavior, and recommend our user the same items. Or we can look at the items similar to the ones which the user bought earlier and recommend products which are likely to them. Now, these are two basic approaches in collaborative filtering, which are the user based collaborative filtering and item based collaborating filtering. In both the cases, this recommendation engine has two steps find out how many users or items in the database are similar to the given user or item and access other items to predict what grade you would give to the user of this product given the total weight of the items that are most similar to this one now we'll learn more about collaborative filtering in the upcoming videos so let's move ahead with object detection now, object detection is a computer technology related to computer vision and image processing that deals with detecting instances of semantic objects of a certain class such as humans buildings or cars in digital images and videos every object class has its own special feature that helps in classifying the class in recent years classification models have surpassed human performance and it has been considered practically solved while there are plenty of challenges to image classification there are plenty of write-ups on how it's usually solved and which are the remaining challenges now object detection is one of the areas of computer vision that is maturing very rapidly thanks to deep learning every year new algorithms and models keep on outperforming the previous ones in fact one of the latest state of the art software system for object detection was just released last week by facebook the software is called detectron that incorporates numerous research projects for object detection and is powered by the cafe 2 deep learning framework nowadays voice technology is everywhere and we are undoubtedly in an era dominated by voice assistants part of voice assistants are speech recognition and one part is searching and acting according to the command that was asked now data science is assisting the speech and talk application by recognizing the voice messages effectively given by the user and produce accurate text output in the response this technique is widely used by most of the popular tech giants like google microsoft apple and so many more in their products to detect the input voice waves and then convert it into text messages to make the digital communication easier and faster than the traditional typing method the most reliable technique used to make an exact and accurate speech recognition result is deep learning it made speech recognition methods accurate and reliable enough to be applied to the outside environment in a controlled manner now you might have heard about many voice assistants like the google assistant apple siri you have microsoft's cortana samsung's bigby and I'm sure you might have also heard about the new artificial intelligence voice assistant Alexa, which is developed by Amazon. Now, coming on to our final use case, which is the sentimental analysis, also known as opinion mining, it refers to the use of natural language processing, text analysis, and conceptual linguistics to identify and extract subjective information in source materials. Using sentimental analysis techniques, companies can respond to negative or positive brand perception. When a company releases a new product, Monitoring and analyzing social media content can play a large role in quickly remediating bugs and error. Now, generally speaking, sentimental analysis aims to determine the attitude of the speaker, writer, or the other subject with respect to some topic or the overall contextual polarity or the emotional reaction to a document. The attitude may be a judgment or evaluation, affective state, or the intent of an emotional communication. So, let's go ahead and look at the various phases of a data science life cycle. Now starting off with phase one which is the data acquisition now before you begin the project it is important to understand the various specification requirements priorities and the required budget you must possess the ability to ask the right questions here you assess if you have the required resources present in terms of people technology time and data to support the project in this phase you will also need to frame the business problem and formulate the initial hypothesis to the test now coming on to the second phase which is data preparation in this phase you will require analytical sandbox in which you can perform analytics for the entire duration of the project you need to explore pre-process and condition data prior to modeling further you will perform the etlt task which are the extract transform load and transform to get the data into the sandbox now you can use r or python for data cleansing transformation and visualization this will help you spot the outliners and establish a relationship between the variables once you have cleaned and prepared the data, it's time to do the exploratory analytics on it. Let's see how you can achieve that. Now here comes the third phase, which is hypothesis and modeling. Here you will determine the methods and techniques to draw the relationship between variables. Now, and these relationships will set the base for the algorithms 
which you will implement in the next phase. You will apply exploratory data analytics using various statistical formulas and visualization tools. Although many tools are present in the market, but R is one of the most commonly used tool. Now that you have got insights into the nature of your data and have applied the algorithms to be used, now we can apply the algorithm and build up a mod. You will develop data sets for training and testing purposes. You will consider whether your existing tools will suffice for running the models or it will need a more robust environment like fast and parallel processing. You will analyze various techniques like classification, association and clustering to build a model. Now coming to the fourth phase which is evaluation and interpretation. After all this we will evaluate and interpret the output received. In this phase you will deliver final projects reports, briefing, codes and technical documents. In addition sometimes a pilot project is also implemented in real time production environment. This will provide you with a clear picture of the performance and other related constraints on a small scale before deployment. Now next comes the deployment of the final module which we have prepared. Now this can be in any language like R, Python or even Java as a matter of fact. Now the final phase which is the operation and optimization. It involves developing a plan for monitoring and maintaining the data science project in the long run. Performance downgrade is monitored in this phase and the model is retrained whenever a new data set is added or there is a downgrade in performance. Now let's have a look at some of the projects being used in the data science training here at Edureka. The first one is movies collection. It is of the entertainment industry and the goal of this project is to explore the movie data sets given the parameters like duration, movie title, cross collection, the budget, the title year and many more. You need to explore and analyze the data sets and find out some insights like you should know the top 10 movies with the highest profits. Knowing the top rated movies in the list and average IBMDB score, you need to plot a graphical representation to show the number of movies released each year and group the movies into cluster based on Facebook likes. Coming on to our second project, which is recommendation system for grocery store. Now, it is of the food retail industry, and this project scenario is to create recommendations for customers of a grocery store based upon historical transaction data, which could recommend preferable articles. Coming on to our third project, which is the Twitter analysis project. It is of the social media analytics industry and this project focuses on social media analytics. The problem can be defined as measuring, analyzing and interpreting interactions and associations between people, topics and ideas. The data set to be analyzed is captured by live Twitter streaming and you have to perform sentimental analysis on the tweets obtained and visualize the conclusion. One of the situations could be comparing two football clubs based on the tweets that they are receiving from their fans. Next we have the air passenger forecasting. It is of the aviation industry and this project is about analyzing the data and applying time series model to forecast the number of bookings an airline firm can expect each month. The data set we will analyze contains monthly totals of international airline passengers between 1949 to 1960. And you have to make informed decision on staffing, hospitality and the pricing of the tickets. Now that we have seen the various phases of the life cycle of data science, let's understand it with the help of a use case. So as you can see here, John wants to put a baseline pricing for his real estate company and needs our help. So now to help John, let's see what data we can collect from different location and how it affects the pricing of an apartment. This is the data acquisition phase. Now data acquisition involves acquiring data from all the identified internal as well as external sources that can help answer the business question. This data could be logs from web server, social media data, census data or the data stream from online sources via APIs. Now as you can see here that the data we have collected is not clean. There are some errors which needed to be cleansed. Also, we may need to change the values of the columns as per requirements. Now data wrangling is the process of cleaning and unifying messy and complex data sets. Data after reformatting can be converted to JSON, CSV or any other format that it makes easy to load into one of the data science tools. Now based on the requirements, a model is creating using the data set. It involves forming and testing hypotheses about the data and the processes that generate it. It requires writing, running and refining the programs to analyze and derive meaningful business insights from the data. Mostly written in languages like Python, R and Spark. Now this model is evaluated using test data set. If the accuracy is low, the above steps are repeated until a good model is found. 
model performance should be measured and compared using validation and test data sets. Now models should have a high accuracy for implementation as well. Now data scientists might have done this in Python or Spark, but if the production environment supports only Java, then he needs to recode it. In this step, the model was created and is deployed into the market, and models generally have to be recoded before deployment. Now, after the model is retrained, we evaluate the model and deploy it. It involves developing a plan for monitoring and maintaining the data science project in the long run. The performance downgrade is monitored in this phase, and the model is retrained whenever a new data set is added or there is a downgrade in performance. So let's have a look at the data set first. So as you can see in the data set, we have 14 number of columns. We have per capita crime rate. We have proportion of the residential land zone. We have the average number of rooms. We have nitro oxide concentration, full value property tax. And finally, we have median value of the owner occupied homes in thousands of dollars and many more. So I'll be executing this practical in the R studio, but you are free to use any of the format like Spark, Python or R. So let me load these libraries. So the libraries which we are going to use are the forecast library, the cat tools, the mass, the core plot and the metrics library. So let me load this library. Now that we have loaded the library, let me load the data into a data frame A. Now, as you can see here on the right hand side in the values section global environment, we have Boston, which is the data set and A, which is the data frame containing the Boston data set. So now we'll find the correlation in the data set. We'll see which variables are more interrelated as to get a better understanding of the situation which we are in. So let me plot the correlation for you. We'll use the core plot here. Now here we can see that the final price, this is MEDV, has a higher correlation with RM, which is the number of rooms, which makes sense as more the number of rooms, more will be the price of an apartment. And similarly, you can see that MEDV has no relationship with the PTR ratio and it has very less relationship with the NOx, which is the nitric oxide. So let us view our Boston data set. So you can see here we have all the rows, which are, which are the 506 entries, and we have the 14 number of columns here. Now to perform any kind of analysis, we need the training and the test data set. So let us split this data set into training and test data set in the ratio of 70 to 30. So here I'm going to use the function sample.split. So as you can see here, we have split the data set into 70 to 30 ratio and we'll assign the 70% of the data set to the training part and the rest 30 to the testing part. Now LM is used to fit linear models. It can be used to carry out regressions, single stratum analysis of variance and analysis of the covariance. So now we need to create a linear model between the variable MEDV and rest of the data set. Now it can be done in two methods. As you can see here, I have commented out the first part, which is MEDV, and then I have added all the remaining variables with the plus signs. And the data set which I am choosing to create this linear model is the training data set. Otherwise, you can do this MEDV, and we can use the till sign and the dot to represent all the other variables other than the MEDV. This is much more simpler and easier to use. So now that model is created, let's have a look at the summary of this model. So as you can see here, we have the residuals which have the minimum value, the first quarter value, the median value, the third quarter value and the maximum value. So you can see the maximum value is 26.78 and the minimum value is minus 12.08. Now looking at the other coefficients in the intercept, we have all the crime rates, the zone and all the other remaining variables. Then we have the estimate, then the standard error, the t value, and the probability. At the bottom part, we have the residual standard error, the degrees of freedom, the multiple r squared value, adjusted r squared value, the f statistics, and much more. Now, these are all statistics terms, and you must know each of these terms before doing analysis. Now, we'll use this model which we have created to predict the prices in the testing data set. So, here we'll use the function predict. As you can see here, now we have here the predicted output. Now to get a better understanding of how our model is, let's plot the prices in the test data set and also plot the predicted output according to our model. So here you can see that the green line and the blue lines are coinciding a lot. And now there's not much deviation between the two. This means that our model is very much accurate. 
So as you can see here, there's not a lot of deviation between these two lines. It suggests that our model is very much accurate. Now we can also improve this by creating another model or by changing the number of factors which are included in the analysis. So guys, this is it. Similarly, you can also play around with the data set, get to know them, clean the data set and perform analysis. Now it's important to know that not all the analysis you do will help you. Some might not make any sense at all and some might not have any logical explanation. But as data scientists, one should always look for answers to describe the analysis. So guys, I hope this video was informative and has helped you to get started with data science. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!